Hello, my name is Keith Lewis. I'm known as Jacques or Jacques Talak on most social media. Um, you can find me uh, at followus.com slash Jacques. It has all the links to my social media. Um, I'm going to be giving a talk today on making a Raspberry Pi 4 into a retro Pi gaming device. Um, the materials you'll need are Raspberry Pi 4, um, a switching power supply, a 128GB microSD card, the RetroPie software, and I'm using an NES-style case for this. Here's the case, and it came with retro SNES-style controllers. Um, so to get this set up, um, you go to raspberrypi.org slash software, and this has the imager you'll need to image the microSD card that we're using. Um, you can also get to it to retropie.org.uk slash download and download the image directly, um, but then you'll have to manually upload that onto the Raspberry Pi. Um, and this, this uh, Raspberry Pi imager method is a lot easier. Oh, I've already downloaded the imager. Um, first step is to choose the operating system we want, and what we're using here is an emulation and game OS. We select RetroPie, and then you want the RPI4400 here. Select your storage device that you want to image, and then click right. I'm not going to do that here. Um, that takes about five to ten minutes, which would exceed the length of this talk. So, um, once you've done that, um, you then put it into the back of your Raspberry Pi there, and uh, plug it up to a monitor. Um, when it boots up, you'll be at this configure input screen. Um, I've got a gamepad on there, so it'll say a gamepad's detected. Um, then you just hold a button on your device to start configuring it. Um, this maps the logical buttons to the uh, virtual buttons that the RetroPie interface uses. Um, This has support for um, Xbox, Xbox 360, Xbox One, um, PlayStation controllers, Steam controller, um, most types of controllers you can think of. Um, so there's a lot of options this SNES controller doesn't have, so I'm just holding down buttons to skip the options I don't need. And once we've done that, we can back out of this. I've already uploaded um, some games onto here, uh, some of the ROMs, so that's why you see all of these systems. Uh, normally, you won't see any of these if you don't have any ROMs loaded. Um, we'll go into Nintendo since those boot up fairly quickly. See, we have full working ROM uh, with sound and everything. Um, most ROMs have no issues. Uh, the only issues you'll see are generally with SNES and higher ROMs, and even then, only a handful of SNES ROMs have issues. Um, uh, they're working constantly. Uh, most of the emulators that are these are based off of are open source emulators. So they're working constantly to make those better. Um, we have a couple minutes left here. So I want to also show you here how to um, upload your ROMs onto the Raspberry Pi. Uh, if you go to the IP address of your Raspberry Pi at the port 8000, um, you'll get to this um, web admin screen. 
Um, you'll obviously have to configure networking via some method first, either, you know, Ethernet or Wi-Fi. Um, then you go to the ROM screen and select the system that you want. And then you can either drag and drop the files over here as zipped files. Um, or you can navigate there uh, to where the files are located. Um, once you've done that, it will do a check on them to make sure that they're valid, that there's that it's not broken, and uh, will actually boot up and work. Um, once it's done that, they'll appear in this list, and then you can go back over to your Raspberry Pi, and you will see them in the appropriate list for the uh, system that you're looking for. All right. Um, uh, thank you. And uh, hope you all have a good day.